Okay, so this is version two of a step-by-step -step video I made of how to drive the giant Chinese diesel heater. Uh, version one had over three quarters of a million views, loads of likes, loads of people saying how it really helped, which is great because those instructions that you get with the heaters are pretty poor, but I broke it down into an easy to follow guide. However, I'm conscious looking at the video, I didn't do a good enough job in explaining about priming, because there's a priming function on this heater, on these controllers, but sometimes it's best not to use it and to prime in a different way. So this video is, is basically the same as version one, you may have already seen that, except for when we get to priming, I'm gonna cut in and make a little bit of a caveat on how to use the priming function. Okay, so what I'll do then is I'll show you how to set the clock, how to do a status check on the key parameters of the machine, how to prime it, you need to prime it, how to do that with the LCD controller, and then we'll just cycle up and down, targeting a preset temperature so we can see how the thermostatic control kicks in and then a shutdown. So just like the rotary one, what to expect the first time you press the go button. Now I'm going to time lapse this. You haven't got to sit through a 15 minute video. I'll chop the middle bits out and so you just see the key bits. So let's go. Okay, so I've just put the fuse in and the LCD control is fired up. What you've got there is the time and we're going to set that now. So you press the settings button there and the digits start to flash. Now it's just like a setting an alarm clock, a digital alarm clock. So it's what, it's quarter past nine now in the evening now. So using the up button there, select two, press OK. Select the up button for one, press OK. We're on the minutes now, we want to go to 15, so press OK. Okay, right now let's move on to the next setting. So we're now jumping down to the next setting, which is a timer. You've got two preset timers. This is on timer one and it's off. So if I press the up button, timer one is now engaged. Press the OK and we can set the time exactly as we did on the clock. It's due to come on at the moment at 21.42. I'm going to OK through all of that. Now that's the off time, so it's due to go off again at 11.13 a.m. I'll go through, go through all of that. Now you've got timer two. Again, you can set it off, on. I'm going to switch it off. Off, down for off, up for on, down for off. Click OK to that. Right, and then the last setting is the password. That's to get into the, uh, the guts of the machine. Nerd zone zone. We're not going to play with that right now. So just let it flash a while and it'll jump back to the clock. Okay, so we're on the time. That little alarm clock there shows you've got a preset time set. Now I'm going to turn it off because we want to fire up manually here, don't we? So what I'm going to do is press the settings button to jump over the time. Second one, right, and see preset timer number one is on. I want to turn it off, press the down up button, it's off. Okay to confirm. It's jumped to timer two. We're going to go okay over that to confirm. Again, it's given the option to go into the nerd zone with a password. We're not going to do that, even though I've now got a password. Uh, we're not going to do that today. And then it will jump back to the time. OK, so we can now do a quick status check. Press the OK button once. That's the temperature in the environment now. Look at that, 30 degrees in my workshop. Ridiculous heat wave. The thermistor that measures it is just underneath there where the wire comes out. Press it again, that is the target temperature that you're going to set. Note it's a bolder font, so the big bad bold font is the one that you're setting at. Press it again, that's measuring your battery voltage. Notice the battery's green, we've got a good battery there. Press it again, that's your error code log. Press it again, you get back to time. So, right, that's the status check. Okay, so you need to prime the machine, get the juice into the pipes before you kick off. Now look, here's my pipe here. The other end's in the tub of paraffin. There's my level there. So you can see I've done most of it. I've left a bit so you can see what to do. And this is what you do. Okay, so we're about to see how to prime the heater because there is a specific method of doing it. However, what I would say is, if you've got a short run from the pump to the heater, and you've got a healthy battery, rather than using the priming function, it's sometimes better just to press the go button and that'll get things underway 
And if it errors out, you're going to error eight code, but then just press the go button again, and eventually it, the fuel will get to the heater. And the reason why that is better is because when you press the go button, of course, the glow plug lights up. So by that way, by the time the juice gets to the heater, the glow plug is already hot and it'll fire up. If you use the priming function and you're not careful, you could actually flood the chamber before the glow plug's on. So when you then try to fire up the glow plug uh, by pressing the go button, you get whole horrible white smoke. So if you've got a healthy battery and a short run, I'd definitely say use the, uh, go, just press the go button a couple of times, two or three times, and that's a better way to prime it. Once you have primed it, you should rarely need to prime it again. I, I, I rarely need to prime my heater. If I haven't used it for a long, long time, uh, I might press the go button and I might get an error rate, press, press it again and it'll fire up. So anyway, but if, if you have got a long run, uh, to, you, you may want to use the priming function and this is how you do it. So you press and hold the OK button and then press the down arrow and you see you get the H and the off flashing. You then press the up arrow and you can hear that pump's clicking and is in fact now priming. You see that level is going up there. Do, 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 do. Not far to go. Um, when I first got this to get juice into the pipes quickly I done a bit of fuel pipe fellatio but if you're going to do that at home be careful because paraffin used to be uh, a laxative back in the day okay so right and you just then plug this in into the bottom of the machine and we're good to go I should say I found these, these this machine tolerant to air air pockets as long as the air is moving through the pipe if a little bit of air gets in there, it's in gone if you get an air lock and it's trapped, you're in trouble, you'll get an error code. So just make sure you not, haven't got air trapped, but a little bit of air getting in, that's fine. I've got that much of a gap now. That's, a, that's fine, I'll plug that in, that'll clear through. Okay, so let's do a fire up. Okay, let's uh, go for a fire up. So let's check the status again, press the OK button. That's the current temperature. Second time you press it, it's the temperature you want. So it's the big one, the one with the big uh, degree signs, the one you want. And you can see there that the one we want is less than the current. So press the up button and I'm going to set it to 30 degrees. So it's one degree above what it is now. It's dropped back again. So we're ready to press the go button. By the way, you can adjust the temperature of the up and down buttons any time while the machine's going. You don't have to do it before you set off, uh, press the go button. So let's press the go button now. You see the on starts flashing, the animation starts, and you might just be able to hear that fan going, but what you won't hear is the fuel pump. Now that confuses people to start with. The fuel pump does not kick in straight away. You've got a startup sequence to go through. But see the animations going here? You've got showing that hot air is been pumped out of the exhaust and cold air going in. A little bit of a gimmick that, but it's all jolly nice. Okay, you can just hear that pump now, yeah? Now you might have heard a little bit of a roar. It looks like the flame tube is firing up and a pump speeding up as well. And I've got my hand in front of the heater and it's coming out with hot air now. Things getting faster and as the body of the machine gets warmer you'll see those bars go up there and they'll go up and up to uh, as things get hotter. Right we're firing up now, we're well underway. All bars going now, that heat exchanger is nice and hot, I can feel that hair blasting out we should be up to temperature pretty soon. Okay, so I'm in my workshop, absolutely sweltering now. Ridiculous me to make this video in the heat wave. Wait for it to get up to 30 degrees. I've got quite a big workshop and it's quite a big number to aim for. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the temperature, the target temperature down to 29, which is what we're showing now. And that will run like that for a bit until it makes sure it's stable. It takes a while for it to, it doesn't 
uh, react immediately against the temperature just to make sure it is an actual real temperature. Right, I don't know if you can hear, but the fan is starting to slow down. The pump is starting to slow down. I don't even hear the pump now. That's me clicking in synchronization to the pump. We've hit our temperature. So we've got to go into the maintenance mode now, maintaining temperature. Okay, so we've got a nice slow tick over on that pump now. You can see the animation slowed down a bit here. The machine's just ticking over just to keep the temperature up. So if you read on the forum, the guys who've, uh, who've used these a lot say it's a good idea to have a good burnout at full power for five or ten minutes or so after you finish using the heater, just to burn out any soot that might have collected in there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ramp the temperature right the way up. Right, so I've ramped the requirement up now to 35 degrees C. Um, and I've done that just so the machine kicks up to full power again, so I can burn out all the, the crap and the soot before I turn it off. And I'm going to run that for sort of five, six, seven minutes or so, uh, and then we'll do a shutdown. Okay, so I'll be running out for uh, seven or eight minutes. Uh, let's do a shutdown. So we press and hold the power button, the on off button. Press and hold. And there you see it flashes off. And you'll see the glow plug symbols come back on because it's cutting the fuel out. You can hear the fan slowing down. But the glow plug comes back on to burn off any residuals that are in there when the flame tube is out. So you, the biggest draw on your battery is when you start up, glow plug comes on, and when you shut down, the glow plug comes on again. What I find fascinating or uh, strange is the pump keeps going for a little while after you turn it off, only, only sort of half a minute or so. You'll see that go out in a minute. And what you'll find is when that glow plug goes out, the fan speeds up a little bit just to purge any nasties out of there. There you go, glow plugs out. I don't know if you heard that fan sped up a bit. And now that will just run and run and run until the thing cools down. You'll see these bars drop away, but I'm going to fast forward all of this, otherwise, it's like watching paint dry. We'll come back to it when it's in a near to its closed down state. Okay, and you can see now we're down to uh, four bars. Reds are gone. Down to three bars. So the message here, here is it takes a long time to cool down to so turn it off before you need it actually off. And we're now down to two bars. Not long from shutting down now. And there we have shut down. Okay, so hope you found that of use. Um, I mentioned in there um, about thermostatic mode. Uh, the trouble with these little controllers is the hysteresis on the on the thermostat is so wide that sometimes it, the temperature creeps up and up and up. So if you've got a small van that's highly well insulated, you're better off running it on manual mode. At the end of this video, you'll see a card you can click on how to do that. There'll also be a, a card to click on to uh, show you how to prime a remote control or two remotes or three remotes or four remotes because you can do more than one despite what a lot of people think. Uh, also another one on how to fire up your uh, heater with a text uh, by sending a text to it and I'll also put a link up there to my hacks channel, uh, my van hacks channel just in case you're interested in mods and tweaks and upscaling your, your camper vans. Okay anyway thanks for watching.